Today's video is all about fun. Let's enjoy this exciting recipe that's full of flavor. Today I'm going to be making some breadsticks. Now I was thinking, breadsticks. I haven't ever done a video on breadsticks. It's a pretty basic recipe. I'm getting ready to kick off season six with a lot of baking, so why not do some simple baking now? Breadsticks. Now I was doing some research and looked around at what's being sold and what's popular. I do this from time to time when I'm preparing a recipe. I want to see what's common, what's popular. Now I'm not looking at other recipes. I don't need that. What I need to know is what people are interested in and what's selling. Now I looked and there are a lot of restaurants, um, a few chains I should say, of restaurants that are selling what they call breadsticks and it's basically just a small loaf of bread about the diameter of my wrist. Kind of reminds me of a really short French baguette. All right, that's fine. They can call that a breadstick. Uh, I grew up seeing breadsticks a little different. My mother would buy breadsticks. And I always remembered it was hard, crunchy little round sticks with sesame seeds coated all over the outside of them. Breadsticks. Sometimes I would see breadsticks and they would have poppy seeds on them, but basically they were all about the diameter of a finger, anywhere from six inches to two feet in length, and well, hard, crunchy, delicious if they were done right. I decided I wanted to do something special with my breadsticks, so we're going to season them up in a very, very special way. There's going to be herbs, a little bit of spice, and it's going to make for some very good breadsticks. I didn't think it was fair for me to pick and choose between hard, thin, and crunchy, or maybe a little larger and somewhat softer. It wasn't fair at all. So why don't we look at both methods and see what we get. Ladies and gentlemen, I guess what we're making today is breadsticks. It's going to be a unique recipe because of the way it's flavored, but it's going to be delicious. So let's get ourselves in the kitchen and cook these up. Hold it before we go in there. Something I want to show you. Let me hold this up. This is a binder. I do my recipes in a binder. I've always done them that way. And so I designed my new recipes that I sell to fit in a binder just like this. You print these things out if you want on glossy, just for, print them front to back. It'll work like any book. And that way, instead of having to buy a whole book, you know, a 20 or $30 book of recipes and getting five or six that you want, you get to buy the ones you want and just create your own book. As you can see, they're well done. I do a lot of instructions. They're numbered. I try to do as much pictures as possible. And all of the newer ones are going to have a lot of explanatory pictures. So it's a more of a step-by-step -step type of recipe. So when you buy that, you're getting something of good quality. Yeah, I know. It's not free. Here's how I see this. You get the tutorial and the recipe version on the videos for free. I tell you all of the ingredients and all of the steps for free. Some folks charge for the tutorials and give out the recipes for free. We all have our way. This is mine. Take a look at those. Take a look at my website when we're done with this video. And for now, let's get in the kitchen and make some good breadsticks. Come on. <laughs> For today's ingredients, it comes down to flavor. Now over here, I have the stuff for a basic bread recipe, and that's gonna be your flour, water, uh, yeast, salt, and sugar. Boom, basic bread, beautiful stuff. We're gonna be adding some olive oil to it to bump up the flavor in that bread and also to give it a unique characteristic in its, uh, in, well, both in the texture of the inside of the bread as well as in the crust, it really affects it. Now on our flavors for the uh, inside of the dough and what we're going to mix into it is going to be some tarragon, basil, oregano, rosemary, and some garlic powder. And I'm going to be sprinkling salt over the outside of it. So I have a little extra uh, large, or I should say coarse granule salt. That'll work really good on the outside of our breadsticks. And the flavor that we have going on here is really going to set them apart. This is breadsticks, folks. Now, so you'll know, yield, how much are we making here? This is enough to make 
on the small ones anywhere from 50 or 60 of those little things. Um, so you're going to have a lot of bread, uh, bread sticks here and a lot coming out of this batch. I have everything ready to go here except for one thing. My rosemary has got these kind of dry, woody, twiggy leaves that are very, they don't soften up very easy in any recipe I've ever used them in. So I like to just take those and give them a quick rub. This doesn't take but a moment to do. There we go. Now we have it all rubbed out and now it won't be dry and twiggy or anything like that in this dough recipe. When I am doing my dough, I always, uh, well there's a couple of things. In the past, when yeast didn't have expiration dates on the package and you weren't really too sure if it was going to be good or not, you would proof the yeast by taking this and mixing it with the water. You could mix the sugar in there also. But what you're going to get is that the yeast is going to wake up and it's going to start foaming. And if it starts foaming, then you know it's good. So if you have old yeast and you're not sure, do that little trick. Mix that yeast into warm water, not hot, warm water, with a little bit of the sugar. And if it foams up, it's good. You're ready to use it. Otherwise, you can mix it in with the flour if it's uh, a fairly new batch and if you're sure about it. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll take my flour, put it right in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get my spices right down here in my flour. Get all of that out of there. That. And our garlic powder. Neat thing about these breadsticks, they're going to come out with a nice garlicky, herby flavor to them. Let me stir that into my flour just a little bit. There we go. Very simple, isn't it? Isn't that nice? So the next thing, I'm going to put in that yeast. And as I mentioned, not the salt, but I'm going to put in the sugar. Go ahead and stir that a little bit. We'll get all of that in there. Now I can go ahead and put my salt in here. It's a good time for it because it's not directly against the yeast. That's the thing is salt will kill yeast if it's directly against it. And if it's in small amounts mixed in through the dough, it won't. But what it will do is it'll hinder the growth of the yeast. In other words, it controls how fast or how much that it's going to grow and develop. And that is one of the balances that we do when we're coming up with recipes for bread making. We need to control how much salt, how much yeast, how much hydration level, how much water in other words, and things that can kill the yeast have to be very carefully balanced in this. Okay. I had one lady tell me that, you know, she, she said that, you know, you can't use spices or uh, certain herbs in your dough because it will simply kill the yeast and, and your bread will never rise. And I said, well, I've never ran into that myself because I've used a lot of spices and a lot of herbs in my doughs and I never had a problem getting it to rise. So that's that. Now we're going to move right into getting this mixed up. After that, we're going to turn it into a big old round loaf rising up. And after a few rises, then we'll get on with making breadsticks. Any kind of mixer will work for this and you can do it by hand also. I do really recommend using a mixer. Very smart thing. When I'm making dough like this, I go ahead and now watch me. I'm going to put in this oil. That's about two tablespoons there. Look at me. I'm just going nuts with it, aren't I? Oh, we're up to about a quarter of a cup right there of olive oil. Going in with my water. I just put it in all at once. Lock the head down, put it on low. Do not start your mixer on a high speed when you first start mixing ingredients because it'll simply throw them up and out of the bowl. Start on low, let it get mixed in, and then once it has, you can speed it up a little. There we go. Give it a little time. At first, it doesn't look like it's going to come together. It'll look all ragged like this. Now, another thing I want to mention, never put hands, fingers, spatulas, scrapers, spoons, or anything into one of these when they're running. 
If you do that, you're going to run into a little bit of a problem with broken items, okay? So keep stuff out of there, all right? Now, I would like to say something. On this particular type of mixer, sometimes the catch back here where it hinges will get a little bit loose, and these things will dance around on you a little bit like it's doing right now. And you'll see it more with stuff like dough. Mixing it normally doesn't. Uh, now, there's an adjustment in here. You can adjust and tighten that back down so it doesn't happen. But if you need a fix for the meantime, well, just a little redneck fix goes a long way sometimes. <laughs> It's <laughs> simple to do. All right, now I'm going to let it finish kneading. I need to get my dough into my dough bowl for rising. Excuse me. Um, go ahead and coat that with a little bit of oil. It doesn't take a whole lot. Just make sure that there's some in there. And go ahead and bring that oil right up onto the sides of the bowl, okay? Because the thing of it is, is it is possibly going to stick anyway, but the oil will reduce how badly it sticks, okay? Now I should have a just barely slightly sticky dough uh, with uh, a nice smooth elastic feel to it. Now let's see here. There we go, hook is out. Oh yeah. Oh God, that feels good. Mmm, the smell. Oh, wow. Okay, I've got this beautiful dough, and I've just kind of turned it under a few times. That's all I've done is just, you know, lightly kneading it, and all I'm doing is rolling it under. You can see the bottom side where I've done that, and I pull it together, and I want to drop it right down on that side in this bowl that we've fixed up. There we have it. When you're rising your dough, you want something on top to keep it from getting dry, okay, and that way you can expand easily. I'm going to let this fill this bowl and then some. I don't want to do that more than once. When I'm rising it to keep it covered, I like to use something simple, okay? It allows me to see what's going on, and I've been doing it this way for years. It makes a great rising kit. Just place this in a warm location on top of a refrigerator works, uh, in a warm room works, just set it someplace. It doesn't have to be hot. Just room temperature or slightly above if you can get it in that 75 to 78 degree range is perfect for rising. Now, while we're rising this up, I uh, need to keep it covered. If it's not this, towel, plastic wrap, whatever goes for it. Get it right there. I'm just gonna give it plenty of time. Later on, I'll be using some more salt and also, I'd like to mention, when we make breadsticks, if you want to brush your bread with a little coating of olive oil on the outside, what it does to bread crust when it's cooking in the oven is unbelievable. It gives this texture and flavor that sets it apart from everything else. Something simple like that. We'll get into that in a little bit. Right now, it's rise time. Looks like that dough has risen on up. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? beautiful speckled dough. Now here's the neat thing, you know, if you got kids and you're having fun at home and they're helping you out in the kitchen, this is a lot of fun for them. Let the youngest one punch down the dough. A lot of fun. And then it's up to the kids to knead it and roll it and stuff like that. So this is where we get family involved in bread making. Otherwise, just go at it and enjoy it yourself. There we are. <laughs> Now, what I want to do here, I'm just going to roll it again, same way I did it the first time. Nothing special. I'm just turning it under. See that? Roll it, turn it under like this. And as I do it, I turn it. See? Turn, roll, turn, roll. Now, what that's doing, and I want to pinch it down here. See? Big pinch, just like that. Drop it down in there. That just, basically, it's a type of kneading. It's a way of kneading your dough. It works, and that's something that you might want to consider when you're doing this. Very easy and quick. I want to leave this here. It's on a nice warm surface, and it's going to keep on rising. I need to rise it a second time. We're going to let it get big and puffy. Okay, that rose up a little bit high, bumped right into my dome, and we have a beautiful rise here. This is really good looking dough. And looky there, it's gonna stay dented. We're gonna punch that down, just like that. This has 
done a lot of rising and it is in good shape. We've got a beautiful loaf of dough. Look at this. Now I'm going to just start by well, making this a little easier to handle. I'm going to cut it right in half. All right, we can see down in there just a little bit and see the texture and quality of our dough. It's really nice. It's real porous. And that's what I'm looking for right there. Now, first of all, we're going to be making little... See what I do here? I kind of pinch it and just pull it. Boom, there we go. Make a little ball just like that. And that ball is about the diameter of a golf ball, it looks like. So let's see what a little ball like this is going to do for us. See how I just kind of roll that in my hands a little bit? There we go. Look at that. Now that looks like a nice little breadstick right there, doesn't it? See how elastic that dough is, how it just wants to keep pulling back in? But look at that. Now we have a nice little piece of dough that's going to be perfect for our breadsticks. I can take this, put it on my pan, I'll line them up side by side. Don't put them in there touching, okay? Because if they're in there touching, then they're going to grow together and stick. And you're going to end up having to cut them apart after they're baked. Now you want to leave a little space in between them. Remember, if this is going to double in size, then that means it's going to come out to about, you know, uh, well, let's put it this way. Put you about an inch in between each one of these, and that way there's some space for movement, okay? That simple. I want to get on with doing some more. Now, in time, you'll get to where you can roll these out kind of even. I guess I'm just getting lucky today because mine normally aren't quite so, aren't quite so perfect. They're usually a little more irregular. And if yours are irregular, that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's not going to change the quality of anything going on here. All of the flavors are still there. Okay, the texture's there, the flavor is there. We have a good product. Now, if you notice, I'm making some very, very large breadsticks. Um, the ones I've got on my pan there, those are almost two feet long. So that's, that is... Uh, surprisingly large breadstick. You don't have to make yours that big. You can make these half the size. You can make them bigger in diameter or skinnier. Um, you can make this into whatever you want to turn it into. It's kind of your little baby to work with. If you wanted to make little round ones, you can make little round bread circles just by forming them into a circle on the pan or into a spiral if you want to. Let it rise up, then bake it in the oven. <laughs> Get creative with it, okay? Have fun with this. That's part of the good time of, of cooking and baking. You know, baking is a really good time in the kitchen, and it is a good time that's best shared with others. Never hurts to share, right? Now, I want to say this. Right now is the time you want to turn that oven on, okay, as you're getting these things made because your oven's going to need to preheat. You're going to need that sucker right up about 400 degrees. Okay, I have some of my breadsticks made here. This is, I think, seven on each. Anyway, I've got, this was the first one I filled. This was the second one. And um, I'm going to be treating these differently. One of these, we're going to hit it with some olive oil and salt. And the other, we're going to do with water and a little salt. And we're going to see what difference we get between them. Now, I've done the olive oil thing before, but I've never used the water thing, and I'm really looking forward to seeing the results. This is really neat. It's fun. And what we're going to do is see how these have almost doubled in size. As these get a little larger, I'm going to get ready to throw them in in a few minutes, and these need about another 10 minutes of rise time. All right, now we wanted to make some little miniature loaves from what was left of this, and I'm just going to kind of knead it down a little bit and turn it into something of a cylinder. Not a very good one at that. Now, if I did it just like this, I would end up with a very a pretty good size loaf, all right? But it also tells me, you know, what I'm looking at on some small cylinder loaves. And if I wanted, I could take this, we'll just come through and half that, and then we're going to look at these. 
Yeah, uh -huh. and I want to half these also. So I'm going to quarter. I took the first half, turned it into breadsticks. And we're going to take the second half. We're going to turn it into the larger breadsticks, uh, or as I like to call them, bread loaves. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just, you know, in, in, in life, sometimes nomenclature changes on stuff. Many, many years back, a computer, it wasn't a machine. They didn't have machines back then. It was a person that uh, totaled money, added and, 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 and subtracted and totaled up money. And uh, so that was a computer. They computed for you. And um, <laughs> it wasn't a machine. Okay, boom, looky there. I've got a nice little cylinder going. And I'm wanting this cylinder to be about an inch in diameter. And there I have it. So that's what I'm going to do to each of these. See these little points? You can just kind of... <laughs> what I'm trying to get at here is you turn this into whatever you want it to be. You make these however shape you would like them to be, and they'll come out just fine. Now sometimes on the ends, if they look a little funky, you can just kind of knead them a little bit. Mess with them. Don't be afraid of it, okay? It isn't going to hurt it, all right? When your loaf is finished, they will be beautiful, all right? As I mentioned, I was going to be treating some of these with a little bit of olive oil and the others with some water. Both of them get a little bit of salt on them. So that's where this begins, right here. So this is similar to what I used to do on pizza crust. Sometimes I still do it, but I just don't make it a regular thing anymore, where I used to. And I kind of miss out on that because, boy, it really, it does wonders for a crust. I'm here to tell you. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing a very simple olive oil coat on these, and it doesn't have to be a heavy one. Just very thin, even going over with some olive oil. And you know, the neat thing about these tutorials is you get to see a side of cooking that often kind of goes undone, and that is the, the artistry of the whole thing. Go ahead and make something unique. Make something special. Make it a little bit different. And when you're finished with it, you got something you can show off. So, I'm going to take some salt and just gently go over all of these. All right. There we have it. These are ready to hit the oven. Now this is the reason I like doing tutorials because this is where we get into the, the, the nitty gritty and dark and dirty side of, of baking and having a fun time with this. Sometimes when I work on bread, I like to spray it with water and get it to rise and do different things and get a good crust that way. And I, I do that a lot of times with French bread and then different loaves of that nature. This is breadsticks, and I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. I keep one of these bottles around, which is a bottle that you can pressurize with its cap. This is an older model of it, but you pressurize it up, and once it's all pressurized, you can spray water or oil or anything. So the oil I just painted on those others and spent all that time doing, I could have just done this to. Wouldn't that have been quicker? Okay, and I showed you both methods so you'll know both methods. I have a second one of these that actually has olive oil in it, but you wouldn't have seen painting it on and you wouldn't have learned that you can do it either way. And that's what I want you to know is that either technique works fine, all right? Now, one of the reasons I like to hit it with some form of liquid, whether it be oil or water, is to get the salt to stick, okay? And that's the other reason is it changes the, the nature of the crust. What it becomes, becomes different. I wanted to show you what I mean by sometimes you can just be whimsical and do your own thing. Now this is the other sprayer that I have. This one is olive oil. And so I can do something nice and light just like that. See how quick that is? and then hit these with a little bit of salt. And I wanted to do this just to kind of show you that you don't have to do everything in a certain specific way. You get to be yourself. You get to be whimsical and artistic. Make different letters or numbers. Have fun with these things, okay? For goodness sake, make this a good time. So the first ones hit the oven. 
as the other ones are rising. I'm gonna give those about 15 minutes and we'll give them a good look at. If they're ready to come out, we'll pull them out. We're looking for a light golden brown with some slight medium browning on it. Do need to mention that was 400 degrees on our oven. The quantity of everything that we use today on our ingredients starts right over here. This is four and a half cups of flour and one and a half cups of water. Now folks, on the flour, that weight comes to a pound, six ounces, or if you would like, 610 grams. So if you're measuring this stuff, 610 grams. And then down here on our yeast, I have I believe that's 14 grams of yeast. It's two packages of yeast, which is equivalent to about four and a half teaspoons. Now on the uh, salt, we're looking at about eight grams of salt over there or two teaspoons. And right here I have two tablespoons of the sugar. And if you're gonna weigh that out, you're looking at about 24 grams of sugar. The olive oil I put about up to a quarter of a cup. Now a couple of tablespoons up to a quarter. So as much as you would like to use, or if you can back it back down on yours, feel free to. The tarragon and basil, I used one teaspoon of each. On the oregano and rosemary, I used one half teaspoon of each. And then on the garlic powder, I used one teaspoon of it. The salt, as far as it goes, it's just to your taste. How heavy would you like the outside of those loaves salted, or do you want them salted at all? You can leave that out if you wish. As far as salt in the bread itself, it's really needed because it helps to control the rise. Folks, that is your recipe. Let's take a look at our beautiful bread sticks. All right, that's pretty looking. That right there, that, Good and crispy is 14 minutes right there. So I'm going to go in with two pans this time, which will change the nature of the browning on these. It's just in the way my oven works. Oh, look at that. Got a nice, beautiful, even color. Oh. I'll say this my pan is rather hot. Ouch. Let those cool. My breadsticks are ready to go. Nice looking, aren't they? There they are. We have them out and cooling. They'll cool down pretty quick, but beautiful, beautiful breadsticks. Exactly what we're looking for right there. And these are so neat because like I said, if everybody gets to be involved, they're fun to make and you get a really cool treat. These are beautiful and delicious tasting. Everything's finished up. I browned my bread just a few extra minutes to get that extra dark crust. I like a nice crusty bread. That's one of my favorite things. It's one of the reasons I like doing stuff like this. So here I have beautiful bread sticks. These guys are ready to go. I can put them in, uh, let's say, some sort of a decanter, you know, stand them up vertical, looking really nice. There's a lot of things you can do here. And what a neat way of doing dinner treatment for rolls or instead of rolls, I should say. That would be a nice fit on your plate, wouldn't it? Be creative and have fun with such simple and easy recipes. These came out a little bit flat, and that's because I got them in the oven late, uh, about 10 minutes late. Had I got them in 10 minutes earlier, they would have been a little higher and a little less wide. It would have been a little nicer shape. These came out okay though, they'd make great sandwich loaves, but I wanted to show you something. Open this guy up. Now, let's look in there. Let's look at the crumb on that. The crumb is the, uh, the detail, the detail in the crust right there. And that's what we're looking or talking about when we say crumb. And we're looking at how big the air pockets are or how small and even they are and different variations thereof and this has nice big open ones and it's a good quality uh, recipe for something just like this so for goodness sake please please enjoy this recipe you're gonna have a good time with it and the flavor is incredible 
It smells really good. And as you can see, the crumb on the inside is really nice. And this part is important both to bigger ones like these as well as to the small ones. And, you know, we've, we have fun with shapes, okay? Don't be afraid of that. Just do what you want on that stuff. Um, let me get me this one. Um, the big difference that I notice outside of taste between the ones with water and salt and the ones with oil and salt is that the, the salt is more visible on the water and salt, first of all. Now, let me... Mm-hmm. Mm. Man, that's good. That's the water and salt. Yeah, this one was the one finished in oil and salt. They break the same. Mm. You know, they're both so very close. This one's just slightly richer, not only because of the oil. Oh, man. These things are so good. <laughs> I like making stuff like this. Now, oh, if you're wondering, serving con uh, suggestion. All right, look. It's simple. There you go. Now it's ready for the center of the table in your home. What a lovely display. Um, don't be afraid of doing this. Don't be afraid of it at all. Make some shorter ones about this size if you want. Uh, be a little easier and either way, they're gonna come out just fine. The recipe is delicious. The, the flavors of the herbs, the garlic, they're light. It doesn't, it's not pungent and overwhelming. It's light and it's delicate. And there's just enough there to let you know it's there. It's really good. Folks, enjoy yours. I'm going to be in, having a good time with mine. <laughs> and please, take a look at the rest of my channel, Texas Cooking Today. There's so many recipes there. Also, description box. There's some links there. I'm going to find the link later on to the recipe for this. Also to my website where my recipes are sold. And... All things good <laughs> all right thank you for watching please if you're interested drop a comment down in the comment box uh, if you would subscribe if you haven't done so and please have a good day mm.